Matt Kaplan, host of Planetary Radio, coming to you from the headquarters of the Italian Space Agency, just outside of Rome, Italy. Hello, everybody. Would you like an asteroid? <laughs> well, we're here at the Planetary Defense Conference live Planetary Radio event. We're just set up here to give people some literature about the society, some of our little info sheets, some stickers, and of course, the ever popular asteroids. You can practice some deflection techniques, you know. Let's see, my favorite asteroid would be uh, 2008 TC3, one that was headed for the Earth, and we had only 19 hours to figure out where it was going to hit and when it was going to hit. That was an exciting day. I, my, my favorite asteroid <laughs> oh, is, is one. this one. This one, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can throw it in. <laughs> I happen to like one that has the very glamorous name of 2010 TK7. It's an asteroid that sort of shares the orbit of the Earth. We actually follow it around, kind of like playing follow the leader. I can't choose, I love them all. <laughs> Let me hear from you if you are here to save the world. Now, it's probably not fair to say that the members of our outstanding panel are obsessed with NEOs, but they have devoted much of their professional lives to helping us discover, characterize, and someday understand how we're going to need to keep them from harming us. Well, Matt, uh, over the last 10 years or so, we've made uh, tremendous progress in finding uh, near-Earth uh, asteroids. 2013, when we crossed the threshold of having found 1,000 NEOs a year, and then in 2014, uh, that number went up to almost 1,500 a year. The numbers out there are probably uh, come pretty close to a million objects to be found. And at this time, we've only found uh, a little over 12,000 of those million objects. You know, ESA has several centers spread across Europe, and ESRIN is the one that traditionally focused on Earth observation missions. And one of the things we have there is our Near-Earth Object Coordination Center. So that's where we really focus the European activities uh, funded by ESA in the field of Near-Earth Objects. Apophis is a real challenge. That one comes very close to the Earth in 2029. Could pass through a keyhole. And those little keyholes are the, are the gateways to impacts in later years. So we have to keep track of, I don't know, uh, dozens of keyholes that, that Apophis mm. might be able to pass through. And the keyhole is only two meters in size. Two meters in size. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, we are talking about uh, saving the planet. What I've got is a picture here of, of two rocks. Imagine that these are two objects floating in space far away. If you have a visible light telescope, you might have a very difficult time telling which one is actually the large object. Whereas if you have an infrared telescope, now you're actually measuring the heat that comes off of it rather than the visible light that's bouncing off of its surface. And that means you have a much more direct measurement of the size of the object, the true size. Random space map. Impressive. In 1900, there was one known near-Earth asteroid. In 1950, there were 13. In the year 2000, there were 879. And as of a few days ago, on uh, April 11th, 2015, there were 12,417. That is it for this edition of Planetary Radio Live. Good night.